YouTube. So today we're going to do a posing tutorial for a Black Widow figure. Let's get posing. So today we're going to do something a bit different here. And we're going to do an actual posing tutorial. And this is thanks to Helen Theoharakis, um, who also has a YouTube channel, Six Skill Shiro. So go check that out. So the idea here is that I will show five different types of poses. First pose will be a durability pose, where there will be no creases and no signs of use. Second one will be a pose where signs of use are allowed. Third pose is a pose with uneven footing or use of a base. Fourth pose will be coming directly from source material and the fifth pose will be an extreme pose. Let's get posing. Now for the first pose we decided to go with the straight baton and with the gun with the laser sight. Before we start posing though let's get into these posable batons because I can imagine that some of you would have gotten very excited to see these coming with the figure, at least I was. But um, they're not that easy to pose because um, the brain does not know in advance uh, which bend a certain pose needs. Uh, and sometimes a certain bend can really destroy a pose because your brain will detect when the bend doesn't fit the pose. So then you have to take into account the story of your pose, um, the velocity of your figure and the way the figure is slashing these batons. So uh, there's a lot of ways to do it wrong and just a few ways to do it right for the specific pose you are trying to achieve. Now, of course, besides the accessories, the figure also comes with the base. We'll see different uses of that, like sticking them together or pulling the base up because this way you can tuck the prongs behind the backpack of Black Widow. Oh yeah, and be very careful with the small batons sticking out of the backpack because I broke mine getting them out of the backpack. Okay, let's start with pose number one. Um, we're going to use the baton hand and the gun holding hand um, and to get those off, bend the elbow and then pull off the hand. What I usually do with my thumb, I try to hold back the wrist bag and then take off the hand. So the wrist bag stays inside the arm. For me, that's the easiest way I've found to do it. But still, with Black Widow, it can be a hassle sometimes. So uh, we apply the correct hands. If it's hard to achieve a certain angle, just flex the wrist to its maximum and then twist the hand and then just flex it back. Okay, so I think for Black Widow it's essential that you look at the hips first because usually the hips aren't symmetrical. And to achieve that, one hip should be higher or lower than the other one. Um, so you'll have to bend the legs a bit. Um, the easiest way to do it is just spreading the legs a bit and then just twist the body. Now. When you're trying to manipulate the upper body, try to remember that the upper body is actually three different parts. There's the pelvis, and there's the abdomen, which is like a little bit, and then there's the thorax. As for the legs in this pose, we're going to place her left leg straight to the floor, so straight beneath her, and her right leg, which is to our left, um, will be on an angle. So we're only fixing her lower body at this point. And um, this is what the pose should look like at this point. Um, but of course we need to fix her foot first, which is also a wrist bag. So um, the same thing applies as we talked about with her wrist. So that might take some fiddling. Basically you just want to place the feet flat on the floor. So for this pose, this is what the feet should look like. One is straight and her right one is off at an angle. And now we're going to fix her hips. In this pose we're going for a more heroic look. So we're going to need to push her legs a bit backward, as you can see, just a little bit. Um, but it will make a lot of difference in the final pose, trust me. Now for her upper body, we're going to twist it a little bit and twist her head. Um, we're going to raise her arm 
and have her point the gun. Now if you remember her right foot was pointing outward a bit and we're going to use the gun with the same hand. Her shooting hand will be mainly straight, maybe a bit even overextended because Scarlett Johansson has overextended arms. Um, and the left hand will be holding the baton. Now we'll have to match her head with a line of sight and just tilt the head a little bit so it looks like she's aiming. And then you'll get post number one. Now, if you're trying to copy this pose for yourself, um, try to remember that every joint is at a certain angle for a reason. Um, and the sole reason is trying to sell the pose. Now, as with statues, we can also do swap outs. So we swapped out the baton and the gun, um, giving it a bit of a different pose. And as you can see, the gun holding hand is at a bit of a different angle than it used to be in the previous pose. Once again, we swap things out. This time we used two of the regular guns. Um, and if we use the guns that way, we can also do a swap out by just changing the left hand just a little bit. One hand is shooting and the other hand is having the gun in a resting position. Another swap out. This time we're using two of the straight batons. This is sort of a ready pose. Black Widow getting ready for action. Um, after that, we're going back to the one up, one low stance. This is still basically the same pose we did in the beginning, but this time it's two batons. And this is the last variant of the first pose. So let's go to pose number two. For pose number two, we are going to use the base and the prongs pulled out. Um, we're going to do a bit more of a dynamic pose. So if you're going to copy this pose, creases will show on the figure, I think. Um, so we're going to go for a running pose. So first we adjust the legs. And as you can see, um, I think the rubber band on the hips is kind of fighting the front leg and it's pushing it back a bit. But that's okay, we'll adjust that later. Um, for now, we'll adjust the back leg. And as in the previous pose, I will do the feet first somehow. I kind of think that for Black Widow poses, the lower body is the most specific and most intricate to do. Well, as you can see here, the figure has a double bent knee and it's up to you how you want to use the knee because it has two parts, of course. Um, well, the more you bend it, the more creases will show after getting it out of the pose. Um, we're going for a bit of a run or lunge. Um, when you've stretched out the legs, basically just try to make a beautiful curve. Of course, there are some rules that you have to apply. Um, if the front leg is the left one, then the right arm should be front as well. Um, except if she's holding something or do something very specific like aiming or something. But other than that, um, it's better to follow that rule to sell a pose. Now the neck also has some articulation as you can see. So if you go forward, it shows a bit more of a strain. Um, and if it goes back, it seems a bit more relaxed. So um, for this pose, the head will be a bit pushed forward. Um, her right arm will be her aiming arm and her left arm will be back which would make sense because her right leg is back as well now if you're here then you'll need to adjust the head to fit the line of sight um, because obviously she's aiming a gun um, and then we'll just tweak the pose um, until you like what you see there. In these types of poses, I literally think that creating beautiful lines is what it's all about. So um, I think this is a cool line to have going from her right foot all the way to her left shoulder. And I think this is a cool running pose. Now, if we bring in the base, and we pull out the prongs and we can tuck it behind the backpack. So it actually seems like she's running. 
and I think it creates a cool illusion of her actually in motion. Now, just apply the two guns, and then add the baton. You could have had it in the front position, but somehow I like the baton in the backward position. Now, I usually when you do this type of hanging pose on a on a base, you'll still have to fiddle a bit so that it sells the pose the best. And I think we're done here. Again, when you want to copy this pose to do yourselves, um, keep in mind to check every joint to see if the angle is around the same, because um, every angle is done with a specific purpose. So if you're wondering why this video is a bit longer than my usual runtime of like 10 to 15 minutes, um, I also want to include these shots where you have the turntable so you can see the pose from every angle and you can compare your pose to this one to see if the angles are matching. If, of course, that is something you would like to do. Um, I'll try to include some timestamps so you can skip to the different poses um, if you don't need to see the rotating bases. Um, if I forget to do it at the end, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to add them anyway. Now, we're doing some swap outs with the posable batons. Like I said in the beginning, the posing of these posable batons is pretty specific. Because not only does it have to match the velocity of Black Widow's running, it also has to match the story that you're trying to sell. Um, in here, um, Black Widow had her batons in her arms and her arms were across the chest. Um, and she swung out her left arm first and then she swung out her right arm. So the swings are inside to outside and left first and then right. Now, as a variant of this pose, um, we first put the prongs behind the backpack, but now we're going to use them as a crotch grabber. So this is basically still the same pose, but instead of running, this is kind of more of a leaping pose. We'll need to adjust her upper body for it, um, because she is leaping in the air and then looking to the left, um, and we're going to switch out the hands. So in this variant we're kind of going for that she's pointing at a target with the left hand and then whipping out the posable baton like this. And when you switch out a pose like this you just look at her from all angles and see if you think that all joints are correct. Now, by just swapping out the posable baton for the gun, you get to this pose. It's basically the same pose, but with a different feeling. Now, for another swap out, um, the pointing hand will be swapped out for the gun holding hand. So now, Black Widow is dual wielding two guns. And once again, I have or firing one gun and having the other gun in a resting state. Yeah, okay, so this might be cheating here, calling this still the second pose. Um, but I'll still call this a variant of the second pose. The, the lower body is exactly the same. Um, and we just switched out the hands to the batons and we lowered the arm so it kind of made more sense. Still the same pose, a variant of pose number two. Um, this time the pose of batons. She is swinging her left and her right arm from the inside to the outside at the same time. So the first pose we did with the posable batons, she first swung one arm and then the other. But as you can see, they're symmetrical at this moment, so the swing came at the same time. I would have preferred a dynamic stand for this one, but I think the crotch grabber can do it as well. But um, speaking of a dynamic stand, I switched to one, so... Um, because this is what I would do in my own setting. Just 
use the dynamic stand have less chance of Black Widow falling down. This time the baton swings are from the outside to the inside. Now having the arms uh, symmetrical like that gave me another idea. Um, let's still call it a variant of pose number two. Um, I had this dual gun wielding idea with symmetrical arms. Now when you're dual gun wielding I think it doesn't look the best if you have the guns pointing at the same target. Um, so as you can see I have Black Widow pointing her arms at two different targets and she just looks at one target and because the other arm is in a symmetrical pose um, the mind can very easily coordinate that. You can just try it out yourself. Um, it's pretty hard to have your hands do two different things at the same time but if you mirror them, so if your left arm mirrors your right, it's a lot easier to manage. Um, so I think that's the best way to approach dual wielding. At least when it comes to shooting two guns with the Black Widow figure. Now, when I was doing the previous pose, I kind of got some Matrix vibes. And um, this is sort of a Trinity pose. So let's go to pose number three, which is the uneven footing pose. As you can see, this is the Thanos base. Um, and we're going to have her left foot on the upper part and her right foot lower. Now, the Black Widow figure is very easy to pose and her legs can spread apart very easily. Um, so this pose is going to leave some creases, maybe. Um, so don't do this one if you're very concerned about keeping your suit pristine. Luckily, as opposed to the white Black Widow figure, um, the black suit has um, sort of a spandex kind of crotch area. Um, so all of the areas where normally a lot of tension comes, um, um, it, it's, it's very stretchable and poseable material, um, which is also a step up from the end game Black Widow figure. So this Black Widow figure is actually the most poseable Black Widow figure we have ever gotten, including the snowsuit. Um, as you can see, first I did the lower body again, um, once again, because I think lower body is so specific on Black Widow. Um, and I kind of tweak it here a bit because I need to um, have the pose look as stable as possible. Um, because if it looks like the figure is falling from the base, um, it won't look as a powerful pose. So getting the feet right, getting them strong on the base is a very integral part of the pose. Um, as you can see, we haven't even touched the upper body yet, but I think you kind of feel that this is a statuesque kind of pose, right? So now we just need to add the batons. And then we get this. So as you can see, I've straightened out the arms a bit. Um, it seemed right to me because for me, it made the pose more powerful this way. Now, when it comes to weapons like these batons with the spikes, um, try to remember that the front of the weapon needs to be aligned with either the first or the second knuckle, usually. Um, just try it out, um, get something, an object that's similar to the batons, and just see if it lines up to the, to the first or the second knuckle. Usually it's the second knuckle. Now we'll swap the batons with the guns, um, and instead of having two arms lowered, we'll have one arm a bit up. Um, I think it makes a bit more of an interesting pose. Um, having the two guns down looks a bit weird, as opposed to when she had the batons. Another hand swap. So um, we traded in one gun for a baton with a spike. And um, the cool thing is that you have like three different tops to add to the batons, either the poseable ones or the rigid ones. Um, and I added the spike. I don't know why, but with her standing like that, I really needed to do uh, a reloading one. Um, I think it has to do with the idea of her standing on top of a mountain, getting ready to go into a fight. Um, but I quite like it. Let me know which variant you like best um, of this pose. And also, let me know if you like this format of kind of a posing tutorial. 
I will get better at doing the angles right. Um, after having her at a reload pose, I thought it was cool to have her in a naming pose. It's not always that we get an open hand like that, but when we do, um, I think it's cool to use it. Pose number four. Um, we're going to do a pose straight after source material, and for that we'll need to overlap the prongs of the crotch grabber. Um, because we will need to have Black Widow's legs overlapping a bit. Because we'll be going for the Black Widow movie poster walking pose. And I think source material like this, like this movie poster, can be pretty iconic. So that's why I thought in this format it would be cool to also do poses from source material. Now, like I said before, um, I think Black Widow's hips are the most important of a pose. Um, so we'll be balancing out the hips and then adjusting the upper body for it. To get a very feminine pose, you try to have the character's legs in one line. Um, so you'll need to overlap them a bit as far as you can and then adjust the feet like we did before. And when it comes to walking pose, try to not have the feet touch the floor completely both at the same time. So always have either the front foot or uh, the back foot, or, or maybe even both, um, not touch the crown completely. This would of course be a lot easier with a toe band, but that's the only thing we didn't get with this Black Widow fitter, a toe band. Now again, to get the hips asymmetrical, um, we'll need to adjust the back foot a bit more than we usually do in a walking pose, because you want to have one of both hips lower to the ground than the other one. Um, and this will get the Black Widow walking effect. So I don't know how clear it is, but her left hip to our right is a bit lower to the ground than her right hip because her left leg is extended. And then you just adjust the upper body and the shoulders to match the hips and the legs. So again, just apply the simple rule, her right leg is in front, so her left arm needs to be in front as well, and vice versa. And when you've positioned the hips the way you want to, and the legs the way you want to, um, then just balance out the pose to make a great curve again. And just try to see the figure as one large line going from shoulders to feet. I think seeing your figures that way might help in creating a pose you really like. So here it's a bit more obvious. Um, Black Widow's right hip, so it's to our left, um, is a little bit higher up than her left hip. Just because her right leg is extended and off to the back. Then after she's on the base, sometimes you'll need to adjust the upper body a bit more. And I think when that's done, you just adjust the arms to um, have it more of a natural swing. And then lastly, the head. And once you've done that, you're done. Then all you need to do is add the appropriate accessories. Now, when it was almost done, I still needed to adjust the legs and feet. Because you really want the legs to appear as if they're walking on one line, to have it really feminine. And to get that effect, also, you need to um, not look at the figure from straight on. So, like this. If you turn the base just a little bit, then the feet are in one line. And then it'll look like this. Now, this might not be as important if you're just posing on a shelf, but when you're confident with your pose, just turn the figure around to see if you really like it from all angles. And um, I think I'm pretty pleased with this one. I think it actually looks like the walking pose on the moving poster. Let's do pose number five. The dynamic pose. There were 
so many poses that you could do uh, that would count as a dynamic pose for Black Widow because she's a very athletic character um, and she's portrayed as being very proficient in martial arts so you should you could actually do any martial art or mimic any martial art you would want to um, but for this figure I just wanted to show off her range of motion in her legs because like I said her crutch area and most areas that would normally take a lot of tension has like the spandex kind of fabric so it makes it very easy for her to do splits now while you're doing this you might notice that the rubber um, harness or the, the gun holsters are kind of fighting back what you want to do but you just need to be a bit persistent with a bit of patience you'll probably get there so as you can see I'm going for a kicking motion with her right leg um, after that you can just easily twist her torso and then aim her head just so it actually looks like she's looking at a target and depending on the story you're trying to tell you can interpret looking at the target a couple of different ways you could actually look at a target um, and not look at your foot um, because your foot is behind the action already you could also look at the target and not look at your foot because your foot is still in front of the action um, or that's kind of what I'm going for here you can just look straight at it because they're kind of in the same direction now as far as the kicking foot goes I was kind of tempted to use the knife of the foot which is the, the, the side part of the foot to kick but it's not the most stable kick you can do uh, it looks cool but it's not a stable kick the most stable kick you can do is with the heel of the foot um, so that's what I'm going for here and as you can see it, it was a really quick pose um, because I'm done already um, uh, you just need to adjust the, the upper body a bit so it actually leans forward and like I said the neck also has a bit of motion so if you push it forward a bit it looks like she's straining a bit or putting some force um, and, and that's kind of it then you just add some goons and these are goons I, I use these a lot these are uh, the, the gangster kingdom figures and the one is the caricature of Jason Statham and the other one this one over here is the caricature of Finney Jones and I think they, they work really well as goons also, when you're using goons or when you're using figures, try to use the fabric to sell um, the story a bit. So I used the glasses to show that, um, that he's kicked and the scarf also to display some sort of velocity in um, the guy's head. So this was the last pose of this video. Um, I really hope you like this new format. So the format is basically a posing tutorial. Um, I will get better at doing the angles so you can see it better. I think sometimes my arms are in the way in this video. Um, I'll do it better next time if you like to see content like this. But I really would like to know if you like more of these or if you would like some posing showcases like I normally do with like a gazillion poses um, just after each other not showing how you get into these. I think both are cool to do to be honest and uh, the trade-off of this version is that the variants count as multiple poses but other than that I'll only do five basic poses but you can also see how you can get into different poses from a basic pose so that might be a plus and um, that's it so let me know if you like it and hit like and subscribe and do all the other fun stuff if you're up for doing one-on-one -on -one posting sessions let me know because those are cool to do as well um, if you like posing content just hit up our Facebook group six skill posers and remember to never pose outside your own comfort level but always keep posing